As I said, my name is Devi. I'm a software engineer at Hikages, and uh, I do a lot of TypeScript. I've been doing TypeScript since 2013, so kind of a dinosaur in there. Um, so uh, if you can't, let me let me know if you can't hear me properly, and I will make sure that it's it's better for everyone. Okay, let's do this. Very good. So. Uh, let me start here. Much better. It's better. Much better. I got that. Very good. Perfect now. Yes. Great. Okay. Let's do this. So I work at Hackages. A quick word about Hackages for those who don't know Hackages. Uh, Hackages is an education-based company. We, we, we love community. We were built on top of a community and we do a lot of trainings online and offline as well especially especially with this um uh, uh the moment the difficult moment we're having right now we're doing a lot of training online so feel free to check uh on community.hackages.io and you will have uh, so much information and now i'm just going to ask you why are you here I guess you're all here because you want to know more about TypeScript. So now let me show you some stuff about TypeScript. TypeScript, it's all about writing safer JavaScript application. Okay. So let me show you what safer means. So safer is uh, basically it means quite so many things. Okay. So I have a quick agenda for you here. We're going to cover JavaScript, JavaScript versus TypeScript. So you're going to understand what I mean, what I mean by Cypher. I'm going to show you how, you, how I felt in love with TypeScript. Like the day I saw something in TypeScript and I was like, this is for me. This is something I want in TypeScript. I, I want when I write JavaScript, okay? And then I will show you how to migrate a, sing, a simple project from JavaScript to TypeScript, okay? And then I have a bonus for you. At the end, I have a small bonus for you. What we're going to have in that bonus is basically uh, a challenge, okay? So today we're talking about begin, like a beginner level TypeScript. In a week, we're going to do another exercise where we actually build an entire application from JavaScript to TypeScript, okay? So stay tuned till the end and uh, you will see some great stuff uh, happening there. So, Cypher, what the hell do you mean by Cypher, okay? So, the people right there, if you, um, uh, if, if you have uh, some, some idea of Cypher, I, I want to see that. C could you type in the chat what you, what you think Cypher means in JavaScript? We have a small delay, so I'm going to give you like one minute to be able to type what, what you think safer means in that specific slide. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm just dealing with the, the delay right now. So, uh, I encourage you to type in the chat what you think Cypher means, okay? And I'm gonna read some of them. And as I do it, I'm going to show you what Cypher means uh, 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 in the slide. Okay, so go ahead, what Cypher means? Less bug, okay, it's coming in, yeah. So Joe said less bug, wow, okay, that's, that's, that's a good one, okay. Who else? Uh, more confidence, oh, type safe, less errors, type, okay. Mm, more reliable outcome, very good. Now, what type of var is, oh, that's pretty good. Um, it's mean that rather than stuff falling at runtime, it doesn't because it's checked before. Yeah, runtime versus compile time. That's the main thing right here. Um, ES6 plus proof, well, yeah, but safer, not really. Um, more predictable call. Yeah, amen. Thank you. So that is a good, those are good input. Okay. So let me show you. 
This is safer, right? You cannot read property bar of undefined. Um, you have things like cannot set property value of undefined. Yeah, those are things that you see in a real JavaScript code. I can see you all there being like, this is something I've done. Yeah, yeah, please don't do that. Okay, use TypeScript, okay? Um, and then you have this kind of error. You have a function foo right there. And then you see like, you try to call this.foo and then say this.foo is not a function, obviously. You have a property, my button, which is undefined, and then you're trying to check the length on it. And that doesn't work, indeed. So what is, what is the difference between JavaScript and TypeScript? Okay. So JavaScript is yellow. That's one thing. And TypeScript is blue. Okay. But let me show you that. This is, type, this is JavaScript, right? The yellow thing is JavaScript. It has a set of features, a, a set of functionality. Okay. Um, and then TypeScript is basically that blue-ish thing. But that blue-ish thing incorporates the yellow part as well. Okay. So um, uh, the, the TypeScript is what you call a superset of JavaScript. Okay. So for those who are starting with it, that's the way you should be able to picture that. Okay. So let me show you in code what, what I mean by TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. So I go here, uh, I want, I'm inside a, a TypeScript playground. Okay. So you can, you can, you can type it there. I want to make sure that you all see what is happening here. So what you see here on the left, it is TypeScript on the left and on the right. So on my right, it is the, the, the transpiler. So the, 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 the tra transformation from, uh, uh, the, 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 the TypeScript to, to, to JavaScript. Okay. So on the left, that's what you're typing in your application. And on the right, that's what you ship to your client. Okay. So the people using your app. Now, keep in mind that I'm talking about, um, TypeScript being a superset of, of, uh, 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 of JavaScript. Okay. So now what you see here, you see an object user that has four property. And as you can see, the first one is a set of numbers. There's a, there's a string here, string and a string. Okay. So let me show you in TypeScript how you, how, how, how you can make this code much uh, stronger. Okay. So I'm going to create a class and I will just create a class user. As you can see, I wrote class on the left and then on the right, I see also a class. So basically here we're on the 101. What I type on the left is basically what will be transpiled on the right. This is the yellow part, that yellow, right? But we still uh, the same thing where the two technology basically uh, are uh, uh, come together like uh, wh where, where they are, they share the same thing. Okay. So now I want to make sure that uh, when I type, I, I would, for example, I have an ID here. The ID is what? It's a number. And I'm going to give it a default value of zero, right? So this ID is the ID here, right? So now I can come here and then say, I want to, I want to create a model. Let me finish here on the top. I'm creating a model that map this. So I'm going to add a login string. Let's give it a default value because that's the way my it's configured. And then I will, I'm going to add company as well and a role. Okay. So, that, that's, that's, as you can see, I have a class and for people that, that do, uh, 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 POO. So, uh, um, uh, 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 well, how do you call that again? POO seems like, uh, oriented OOP. Wow. Oh, sorry. It's OOP object oriented programming. Okay. Got it. You can clearly see that I have a class and now I can say this thing is of, is a user. Okay. That's it. So. The point here is I just took this and I type it. I gave it an, an identity, which means that here, for example, if someone tried to create a, a, a user without a role, 
that's a problem. TypeScript yells at you. So that's basically the the the. Uh, t t t thank you, Yuri. Indeed, uh, OOP. Thank you. That was the the point. So. Uh, you can see that I have an error right away. So that's compile time versus um, uh, 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 the, 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 the build time. So what, what, I, what, what I'm trying to, to show you here is the fact that first TypeScript block that, that uh, yields an error because of what I, what I type right here. So here I should put back role to make it work. But as you can see so far, what I type on the left is quite identical of what is on the right, okay? I'm still in the yellow zone. Even though here it added a constructor, I'm still in the yellow zone, okay? I could have written what, I, what is here on the left. Now, let me show you how you get into the blue zone. So the blue zone here, I have a user, but instead of having a class, I can say I want an interface. Okay, now here I don't need and I don't need those those values anymore. I don't need them. Okay, very good. I don't need them anymore. But see what just happened. I use interface right here, and I was able to type my user by adding this interface. What is an interface? An interface is a contract. It is a contract. It's the contract that says, I have four properties. They're all mandatory. So if you want to create a user using that contract, you should respect, you should uh, fulfill every single part of the contract. The contract can also say, the role is not mandatory. Right, so I can. The contract says the role is not mandatory, and that's a way for the contract to say it is not mandatory. So by saying that, now I can, for example, forget this, and see, it is not there. The the, the, the thing doesn't complain. But if I remove that, it's going to complain. It's going to say that user is missing a property to be able to respect the contract. Okay, that you don't send that to the user. It's still on your code, it's still on your app, right? So you can fix it before sending that error to the user, right? So what I'm trying to show you here is the fact that interface is the blue zone, the blue part, the things that are not JavaScript, but they are TypeScript, right? So first rule here, don't use a class to type an object or to type anything. Because a class will, will be, if you only use a class for that, that's, a, that's not a good way to go. Because you're actually adding unnecessary code to, to your final package, right? That's one thing, okay? So now, see here, I have a role admin. This is a string. But we have many roles. We can, you can also say is a member only. Okay, that person is a member. Okay, so how do you say that? In, in TypeScript, you can create an enum and then you say this thing's going to be a set of roles. Let me add admin and then I'm going to add member. So as you can see on the, on the, uh, uh, as, as you can see on, 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 on the final, the final thing, something here has been uh, generated for you. A var role, and then there is a function that calls itself and is going to add a property admin and member in that final object that was created here, right? And then now you can say, instead of having admin here, okay, I need to move it a little bit higher so we can see here. So. As you can see here now, I can say instead of saying this is a string, I can say this is a role, right? And by saying this, now below, as you can see, right below is complaining, is saying you're not respecting the contract, okay? So how can I fix it? How can I make sure that we do respect the contract? So I can just come here and then say this thing is a role, okay? But then it's asking me, which kind of role is it? So I can come here and then I say, this is admin, right? Problem solved. But look, 
I'm enhancing, my code becomes better. Enum is not part of JavaScript, right? So I'm actually on the yellow part. So let me go back here. I'm on the on the blue part, but it's still it's 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 still generating something for me. It generates it gives me an enum which doesn't exist in JavaScript per se. But then uh, enum gives me an easier way to 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 write multiple scenario multiple cases in one object okay and if you had to do that in javascript good luck writing this code and being in my team and i'll be like what the hell where do you think you are huh get the hell get the hell out of here okay so i'm not saying that we we don't do that at hackages we we're really kind okay so what i want to show you here is the fact that if instead of saying enum role i say cost enum role See what happened. At the end, I'm still having user instead of all the things that I type here. Okay? So yes, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. Okay? And you should use it to document your code. Now, look, I just said that. TypeScript is a documentation tool. This is where I want to go. It is a documentation. It's a way to say, I, I, have, I have a function. And that function is, for example, let's say, um, get login. OK. And now that login is going to have a property which is going to receive a user. And user is of type user. OK. And that's going to return user user.login, right? This is this is pretty simple, okay? But when you read this, if I don't have that part, you don't know what user is. This is this is what you will write in JavaScript, okay? That that's what you will do in JavaScript. But now, by doing this, you are basically saying, okay, let me make let's make my code much safer, so you're typing it and then you can return that, right? And since TypeScript, TypeScript support ES, all the ES, like oh, today we write ES9 or 10 even, all those features are already there. So you can leverage them in your code right away. So here, for example, I can say, well, uh, uh, sometime user if you don't if you, if there is if you don't pass anything you should say uh, if that user exists then send that right that's that's the way you could write this okay that is one way of going about it now or you can say well um uh, you can use another way which is quite equivalent by saying i'm going to destructure this and take from and I want you to say this. I just put an object in there. It's of type user. So it means that the structure right here has all the property of user, including an ID, including a company. But I'm just interested in the login. Right? That's basically it. And now instead of returning user login, I can just return this. No, it's not TypeScript. This is JavaScript. This is ES, uh, ES 6, 7 already. It's just the structuring, right? But what I'm doing here, I'm leveraging the TypeScript part to be able to find the right property I'm looking for in that object and directly return that object, right? So here I should just point out that TypeScript supports ES whatever, <laughs> okay? That is really, really important. So far, so good. So, by the way, at the end of the session, we're going to have a quick Q&A. &A. So feel free to already ask your question. If I can answer them right away, I will. I will jump and then answer. I'm pointing my finger there because I can see your the chat on my right. So that's why I'm pointing my finger over there. But uh, at the end, I will be able to go a bit deeper on the question. So feel free to ask your question right here. So. I've shown you a few things. I've shown you how 
uh, whenever you you write a type like this, it doesn't show on the right. Okay, it doesn't. When so it, you're basically documenting the thing. Second thing is what is the difference between a class and an interface? Well, I shown you if you use a class here, it will still type your object but you're generating unnecessary JavaScript code on the right because you're only using it to type the thing. So better use an interface, okay? I shown you like you can use an enum to basically create a scenario like this, but if you make it a const enum, so an enum sim simply will generate code on the right, but you don't need actually that code because you're only using it to type the thing. So if you do, you put a const right here, you will get something that is you, you will get your a way to document your code without polluting uh, uh, your your javascript uh, thing and then the last thing i want to show you is the fact that for example here if i have a class let's say courses okay so that's a class in that class i need to have uh, uh, that courses i need to have uh, a property let's say yeah uh, a, a title let's say um i'm just gonna give it uh, something like that so so if i go here and i say i'm going to create a course okay so that's the way i will create a course okay you can and you don't need this but you can do it like this or you just add it it's the same thing so now if i do course.title you see it's there it means that our thing is working it's working really well actually so um, now, look at this. In JavaScript, if this is a valid JavaScript, this is complete valid JavaScript, so there is no big difference here. As you can see, on the right, it created a class, and then it had a property title, and now we're here, okay? So, uh, now, here, what I want to do is basically saying, no, title is a private it's a private thing, okay? Uh, the, 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 what you get now, see? At compile time, you get an error because now there is a possibility to just say private and then you make your code, you can use that property within that class. JavaScript is coming with it in, in the coming version, but you have a way to already use it right now. Okay, so that's the thing. And then another thing is, for example, in JavaScript, you can add a constructor. So you will say, people can add a title of type string. And whenever that title is, is added, you just say title is equal title. I can see people doing OOP. They love it. They do that all the time, right? And uh, so what you, what you will get is the fact that now you can see in TypeScript you will get this error. So what you need to come and say here and say title, um, you can just say you need to pass a title. So it's just one property. So I can say uh, learn type script, right? That, that, that's it. So uh, this thing still complain because it is private over here. That's it, right? So you see, uh, things are coming together but technically I, I i need a property title i need that property so for that i had to write one two and then assignment right here yeah that's that's a lot of mouthful that's a lot of typing for just uh, 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 assigning the, the property title okay so what you could do in typescript you can just say i don't need this i don't need this and I just need this. And as you can see, everything is working again. So I went from what JavaScript offers me to what TypeScript offers and helped me write shorter code and more concise code. And I reached the same level. And if I were to put it here in private, I'm going to get the same exact issue, right? So what I'm showing you here, that's, it's basically the fact that this is once again, that blue part, right? The blue part, that is not JavaScript. And as you can see, the code itself didn't move an inch at all. 
it is the same. But it's just the fact that now you have a way to use uh, uh, what is private, what is public, and, and there you go. So this thing, it will complain, this title here in red will complain, but that won't change the fact that uh, the, the, uh, uh, in JavaScript, if you e execute that code, that code's gonna work. But that part here on the, on the right is the runtime, and on the left is that compile time. So if you listen to this, you're sure that you're not gonna crash your code on the right, okay? So that's basically it. Um, I'm gonna come back to this, this thing later, but this is a way to show you uh, why JavaScript is a super, why TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, okay? So now, let's go back here. I saw people love the, the blue versus the yellow. This is really good. Keep that in mind. By the way, those are the real color of the technology. So now, falling in love with TypeScript. Okay, so I think that was actually the title of the, the, the session. Okay, so I'm going to show you how uh, you're going to fall in love with TypeScript. Demo time. We go back to the demo. So let me go back a bit further. Uh, I need to add one more here. Okay, so uh, here I'm going to have a simple function. So I guess you can see my code. So, and that function is going to be called, let's give it a name that is pretty easy. Um, uh, ret uh, get element, okay? So, uh, now, I'm going to say, for example, if you give me uh, something, let's say uh, element, okay? You don't know what element, right? What you don't know what it is. So I just say el. So what is it? We we, we don't know. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, el. So and I say el here. I got nothing. No help. I get something say bundle re-render. I don't know what it is. I just don't want to know what it is. Or maybe if I type there, oh, it's gonna, no, that, that's not what EL is, okay? So let's go back here, EL, what is it? In TypeScript, in TypeScript you can say, um, this for example is a string, right? And now when you come here, you say, wow, okay, because it's a string, I get this help. I get all these support. People, I'm about to show you something in 2013 when I saw that it makes me feel like this thing, uh, uh, this TypeScript thing is for me. There is no way I'm doing JavaScript anymore, okay? So now maybe you can say EL here could also be a number. Aha, that, we're still in the, that's the, 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 the blue, the, the blue zone, right? I'm typing, I'm giving multiple options, but look what's going to happen. When I say EL now, I get to string and value of. What I'm getting right here, what, what, what I'm getting right here, I'm getting the, the, uh, the, 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 the intersection of the two type. The intersection, meaning that string has a thing, set of things and numbers, but both have and to screen and value of in common. So in my code, what I'm typing, if I just do EL, I see what they share. So there is no way my code's gonna crash because I type um, trim and then, though, yeah, though, you, people, you did it in, well, in JavaScript. And then when it goes to prod, you're like, that doesn't work, why it doesn't work? Yeah, because someone gave you a number. There is no trim in that in the number. Okay, so that's the thing. Okay, so now what you could do, and this is where everything goes crazy. You can just, for example, say if the type of el is, let's say, a number. I'm gonna start with the string. Okay, now I can say. El and as you can see now, it's because I'm inside the if section that I can I have access to all the property of of the string. 
right? This is, this is very important. This is very important that you understand that I only have this list because I am inside that if that creates a block, a block of code for me. So now inside here, TypeScript understand that there is no way ER here could be anything than a string because you enter here. So if that thing is true, then EL dot will give you something that is a string. Now I can I can do I can do whatever I want. Say chart at position nine if there is such a thing. Okay. And I can say here, for example, reach on this. And same thing if I if type of EL is of type number. What, what do we get? I would just say, for example, return uh, el dot. And as you can see, it gives me all the property available in the number. That that was the the ha ha moment for me. That was the I want to use TypeScript forever because you don't get that in the JavaScript in a normal normal JavaScript code. Okay, so that's that's really really important. Okay, so now. Um, let's do, let's do, let me just say to, yeah, let's use something, uh, what is to fix? Yeah, to fix. Then we, we have, uh, an approximate. So, so look at this code. This code is safer. It is safer, but this code, once again, doesn't tell us the whole story. So let me tell you the whole story. The whole story is get element takes EL, which is either a number or or, uh, or, or a class, okay? Uh, and then what you can say here, you can say, what does that return? In this case, it's return a string. Okay, and in this case, you return a number. And sometime you can just return undefined. So I'm saying undefined here, but technically that's what it's returned by default. Okay, but I'm writing it, I'm typing it. Yeah, wait. We want to express what the code does. So here now I can go and, and document my code by saying this could be a string or a number. And I can even go here and then add the fact that it could also be undefined. Right? So what I'm doing here, I'm expressing what my code does. Okay? And and uh, hello, Sebastian, welcome. <laughs> so as you can see here, you have number, string number and undefined, okay? So my code becomes easy to, to read, to share with my team. And, and, and that basically, that's basically a way to, uh, to, to make your code speak for itself, okay? And that, if I take that code, and go back to uh, to uh, the our uh, um, TypeScript playground. So uh, here, let me make sure that this thing isn't complaining. So if I go here and then add that over here and check what we got, see, I just got what you will have written anyway in JavaScript. This is really important that you understand that. I just spent time documenting my code. That's documentation. That is documentation. But I'm just making my code safer. Okay? So, we're almost done. Stay, stay with me. Uh, so, it's, do you know, someone asked, uh, someone asked, do you know, I missed something. What is the green box at the end of the first line? Oh, you're mentioning the green box at the end of the first line. Oh, that is a plugin. I can tell you more uh, later, uh, Philip, okay? Uh, okay, so let me go back to the code, to the, the slide here. So now, once again, conclusion here, it's TypeScript as a documentation tool. Yes, it is a documentation tool. And I've shown you the, the thing that makes me love TypeScript, and I wish you're going to love it as well, because this thing is really powerful. Now, let's go to the... The, the great fun, okay? Um, so, how do you migrate a JavaScript project to TypeScript? <clears throat> so this part is, it's, 
it's usually a fight. It was more difficult between 2013, 14, 15, and something happened in 2016, early 2016, and the world just went like, we all want this. We all want to be in, we all want to use TypeScript. Um, so now, uh, yeah, Kurt asked, what about method overloading in TypeScript? Could we, could we no, take note of that? Because I will go back, I will come back, I will come back to it in a few, in a few minutes, okay? So migrating from JavaScript to TypeScript, three steps, in three simple steps. It is gonna be, it's, 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 it's funny, but whenever I show that to people, they're like, really, that's it? So stay with me and look, look uh, what's going to happen here. So the first step is just to make it work. So, right, what, what does that mean? It means that, it means that you have a JavaScript project, okay? So, and then what you do, you you just you don't you don't uh, break anything. What you just do, you generate the t, uh, a tsconfig file. That's it. That's all you do, and you add set implicit any to false. So let me show you quickly what I mean by that. When you start a JavaScript uh, a TypeScript project, it's going to generate for you a file like this one. Okay, so. Um, so what you do here, you say, I'm going to, you, you just do TSC, so you install TypeScript and then you do TSC init, okay? And TSC init's gonna generate that file for you, right? It doesn't matter. It's a JavaScript project, that's not a big deal. Just leave it like that, okay? I think I can actually do it live because um, I have a whole project for you. And as I told you, I have a GitHub repo that I'm gonna let you try stuff. And then uh, next week, we're going to fix everything together for an hour, okay? So stay with me. Uh, now, let's go back here. I'm going, to, I'm going to write that here for you quickly. So you tell me if you can see things. Yeah, so I'm here. Um, so I could just learning, very good. So I have a uh, TypeScript. You tell me if you can see this version. Very good, okay. So now what I want to do, I just want to add, uh, okay, actually I'm using, uh, I'm using three five three, but that's that that won't be a big deal. Yeah, I'm just uh, upgrading to three uh, three three uh, three. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just to say uh, MD uh, GS project. Okay, do that live with you. So I go. I'm going to touch here and then say I'm adding an index JS, and I'm going to move it uh, index JS. Let's move that into JS here. I'm doing it, I'm taking a simple approach, not taking a big project. The big project is in the GitHub repo for you to, to deal with later, okay? So that's it. Now I can go inside my JS uh, project. And now if I open this, you can see that uh, inside here, I only have that JS file here, right? So if I tap here, console log, uh, TypeScript rocks, okay. Let me make sure that this is not too big. So that's it, right? And then I go back inside my, my I, I go back inside my code and I do node and ask that and you can see it runs. It just says TypeScript rocks, okay? Very good. So now, Look, look what's going to happen. We, we just want to move that to TypeScript, okay? To, to JavaScript, to, to TypeScript. We want to migrate that to TypeScript. So let me take that function. Oh, we, ha we actually had one, one function here that I can copy and, and then go back inside that code. Okay. Okay, so we have we have this function. Okay, now if I say get element, uh, and then uh, the the result will say, uh, is it a string? So uh, TypeScript 
Let me copy this. Okay. Okay, we have that. And then this is going to give us some results. And I'm just going to console log that result. Okay. So now look at this. If I go ahead and run that, I, I run that code. Uh, uh, here I'm going to say to upper, let's uppercase everything, right? So now if we go back inside our uh, thing here, I'm just going to say uh, node again, run that. And as you can see, TypeScript rocks in capital letter. It does work. That's our JavaScript project. Now let's go back to our code and let's go, let's do that migration in, in three steps. First step. The first step here is to go go back here in your project. And what you're going to do, you're just going to say TSC, because that's the TypeScript compiler. Okay. Well, what you do, you just say TSC in it. Okay. So what it does is going to create a TS JSON file for you. So I'm still in my JavaScript project. The only thing that I did, I add that TS file. Okay. TS file obviously gives you so many things and what i what i need here actually let me let me clean that up for you let, let me just clean that up for you because you don't need any of that right uh i just remove way more than i should have oh yeah i need to remove from here let's go a few steps below what else yeah. Yeah. So that's, I don't need any of that. So, uh, this is, this is pretty cool. That's, that's all I need here. Okay. Let me say that and okay. So that, that that's it. I have a simple, I have a simple, um, and, just, and I'm still in the JavaScript project. Okay. So now what I want to do is to say, I want to make sure that when people say, uh, so let's go back on the slide, as I said here, my slide, you can see that we have set implicit any to false. Let's do set implicit any to false. So here you just say implicit, implicit any, no implicit any, and then you put it to false. That basically it, that's it. Our project is ready to go. So now, what does that mean? It means that you can now go. So actually we have one more step before going, before continuing. So let's go back to that, to that step. We're here. And then the last thing that you're going to do here is to rename all the GS file into TS or TSX, right? That, that basically uh, what you do. Okay. So let me, let me go back and then do that for you quickly. So it means that I come here and then I said this file now, you rename that to TS. That's it. That's the, the first step. Re recap of the step. I created, uh, I just create, uh, I initialized a, a TypeScript project. It gives, gave me a TS config file. And then I rename the TS file. And what does that mean here? It means that now everything in my code is any. That's basically what he means. Any, everything. Like if I declare a variable, I'm basically saying that thing is also any. That's what it means. Okay. First step. Second step. Let's go back here. Now, be explicit. That's the second step. Second step means that there is no any, any, any implicit any anymore. Right. And we're going to add common common types. Okay. So, uh, now you go here and then I go in my project and I say that any is now true. So it means that, what does that mean? Any true? It means that in my code, I have now to, to explicitly say, what are the things? So if I go here and I remove any, you will see that 
my code is complaining right away. It's complaining that your thing here is any, uh, and it shouldn't be any, right? Uh, no, no, Matthias, I'm not using, I, I, I'm using, I'm using Wallaby on another, another project, right? But you're right. I've shown, I've shown you, uh, I'm sure, I'm showing you the, the, uh, like a piece of code that use Wallaby. Good point. Good catch here. So, and now what I, what I do here, I can now start saying, what is that thing? We saw it, right? It's a string or a number. Okay. So the, 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 the difference between doing um, um, the, the first step and the, 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 the second step, not the difference, but the time lapse that you need to take there is to say, team, let's first add TypeScript and give them a few months. Rename all the TS, the JavaScript file into TS and give them a few months. Once they get used to the fact that TypeScript is there and things are still rolling, force people to start adding those types, right? Once they have those types, uh, uh, once, once they have the, the, the steps, uh, uh, the, the, the types there, step by step, you go and you start building a more stronger um, uh, ecosystem around TypeScript in your project, right? So that's, that's basically the second step here. So let me show you again. So I had, I changed the no implicit, and now you can add common type. And then whenever you have, you're using third, uh, third party tools, there you got to make sure that um, you, uh, you add those, you, you add the typing for those tools. For example, here, I'm inside, uh, I'm inside a, a, a Node.js project, right? Because I'm just using Node in, 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 in a sense, I'm using Node here. So here, for example, I can say import um, FS from FS here. Right, so what is that? So FS here is actually uh, a, a node, a node uh, thing, right? So what I'm gonna need to do, for example, um, I'm gonna have to go and say, let's go inside the thing here and now add a yarn, add. Uh, it's called node uh, types. So you say types node, for example. So what, what you're basically adding, you're adding all the typings for Node.js inside your project. So that's kind of, that's kind of the, 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 uh, the, the way you start building a more, uh, a stronger ecosystem in your project. But then that is just part, part of the thing. So the last step, quickly, so let me show you the last step here. The last step is where people in your team are gonna start hating you, like for real. Right, so that's where you you enable strict the strict check, right, and then you start adding more common types, right. So, how do you enable strict check? The strict check, uh, let me show you here. It's basically it's it's one or two things at the same time. So the first thing you go here, you say, I'm gonna go inside this, and I'm going to add this, and put it at true. And there is another property called strict that you put at true. Once you have this thing here, problem starts. Like anything that is not typed in your project will just block the compiler. Okay, it's assuming that you put that in your compiler as uh, uh, compiler options as like if things aren't compiling, don't generate anything, your entire team is blocked. So that's why you need to take it step by step, right? But those are just simple, simple three steps. So if you go back inside the project, you can see now that, okay, it's going to complain though. So that, that, that's, that's, that's correct now. So remember when I installed the Node.js typing, this thing wasn't complaining anymore, right? And now I have FS here, you can say, um, uh, why I'm not seeing anything with that? Okay, let's say uh, create. Yeah, create read stream, for example. So now I have access to this, but the point here is the fact that, uh, yeah, indeed, what I, what I needed to do is F, FS uh, as, um, yeah, no, no, indeed. I, I should say start 
here as FS, right? Now I can have the entire thing, the entire set of method uh, available here. And I just need to give uh, the name of the file and, and that's it, for example, okay? So that's also, it's a thing you can fix in, in TypeScript and then just have your TypeScript uh, take pick that up instead of you uh, going and find all the method yourself by saying, for example, I want this, unless you know where, where they are, right? But the point I'm showing you here is the fact that you can basically type a node uh, code as well here. So we're running out of time. We're running out of time. So let me quickly, quickly show you something. So let's go back inside here. So uh, we did we did a few things, right? We actually did a lot, a lot of things right here. So I, I want to show you something about TypeScript that is actually really nice um, as well, but that you discover as you keep working with TypeScript, you start discovering the power of that thing, okay? So what I'm going to show you is, um, uh, well, let, let, let's put it this way. I have some snippet of code and I'm gonna share that with you. I'm sorry if it's the first time that you see TypeScript because that thing's gonna get a little bit difficult right now, right? But as we go along in the coming week, because I'm gonna be covering more things about TypeScript as we go along, I'm gonna, sh we, I'm gonna get you there. I will make sure that with a, a set of home exercise plus um, some live webinar like this one, you should be able to ramp up your skill set in TypeScript, okay? So let me, let me quickly show you something here. So I have uh, a project that I've shown you, I shown you this. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I, someone asked if I was using Wallaby. I use Wallaby in this, in this exact project, okay? So what I'm going to ask, I'm going to do here, I'm going to take some piece of code um, and then uh, we're going to discuss that code together here. Something very simple, by the way. Uh, no, not this one. Let me close that to make sure that I'm not confusing you here with that. So let's go back here and let's pick that thing. Yeah, it was it was basically here. So let me. I already had a few a piece of code here, so I remove it to just show you uh, what we had. But at least you will be able to see uh, what uh, what we had here. So, so now uh, I have that. Yes. Okay. So um, here I have something like add number, right? That's just uh, a function, as you can see. It's 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 well typed. So here below, I have a function called identity, right? And that function here says identity takes an item and return an item, okay? So I'm going to put side by side the code, the code of this and the test on the right. So where are the tests? So let me just make sure that this, they're all correct. And we're going to stop there uh, right after when I'm done with it. So, I have two files. On the left, some code for you to learn TypeScript, and on the right, some test. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. All the tests are passing already. So let me put it here and then here. So I'm just exporting the function because if they're not exported, they're not visible on the other side. So obviously they crash. Okay, so this is part of the, the uh, TypeScript training that we give at Hackages, okay? So I'm just showing you something really uh, 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 like precise about TypeScript because you need to understand that the code you're writing here in TypeScript, it is, uh, it, it, uh, it's just documentation that we're, we're doing. That's, that's all we're doing, okay? So, uh, yeah, that, I, I, and Sebastian, we need to talk about, there is, there is an amazing guy in Belgium who wrote a book about, about TypeScript and he's actually in the, in the, the channel right now. He's, he's, he can also answer questions. So um, feel free to, 
to ask questions and I'm gonna answer them, but there are so many other people in the chat right now that can that can help with that. Thanks, Sebastian. So what you see here, I have a function called identity. This is my, my piece of code right here. That's my test. What 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 the tests are saying, they're saying that, well, identity, if you give it a number, it should return a number. That that's basically it. If you give it a string, it should return a string. It's identity. It's it's super simple, right? Think about it for a second. So now what you do, you say, well, let me make sure. See, this code is passing because that function identity takes something and then return that thing. It's working. But now, what? See where 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 uh, TypeScript comes in. My tests are written in TypeScript. As you can see, I see a number, sometimes a string, an object, or nothing. Right? That's that's basically it. So what you will do here, you come here and then you say, item could be anything. So you come here. Let me make sure that I, I put things at the level where you can see both. There you go. Now you can see both. So what I'm going to do here, I say, this thing is of type T. And since it's of type T, so I can just say that. And as you can see, all the red things here are gone. All of them, they're gone. Okay. Now, I have another thing is like here, it doesn't work. It's basically saying, well, sometimes it doesn't take any argument. It, it doesn't take arguments, which is good. So how do I express that? So I come here and then I say, sometimes it doesn't take anything, right? That's basically it. I document my code, right? And then that thing says, whenever you call identity, identity takes something of type T and return something of the same type. So if I call identity here and I say 12, okay, and I do uh, this, what is it? Yeah, so I see that it returns 12 right here. Right, you understand that? So th what, I, what I just did here, I use that identity, I use it, I use this generic, so that the way it's called, to basically type my code, okay, and to give the user a way to uh, a, a way to um, uh, uh, type their code and enforce typing in their application. So what I'm trying to do here is to say you can now say, for example, that you have. So let me close that. Hopefully that's clear for you. Now you can say, um, you you can, for example, say I have a list of of books okay so what is what is a list of books so books is uh, something of type uh, uh, let's say um, okay let, let me take let me take a quick other examples let's say I have a class here and then say this is this is a, a book okay I'm not using a class I'm going to use an interface okay and since in interface I like to use the iBook thing Right. And then this is going to have a title. OK, that's that's a title, which is a string in that case. We, 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 we don't know, actually. So I'm just going to say title uh, uh, book is equal is, is of type iBook. And and it has obviously a title, as you can see. So let's say uh, uh, what's the thing uh, TypeScript rocks okay and i'm just gonna put author here and then i'm gonna say sebastian so you know which which sebastian i'm talking about in the in in the thing so so i have an author but as you can see it's complaining here because there is no author so i can go here and then say uh, let me add an author and here that that author is a, as a string and i can put it as as a, a Thing. So here, if I go and I say book, and I just show you this, so you can see I have title, rocks, and everything goes in, in there. But I could also have said, I don't know what string, what, what title or author are. I don't know what they, they should be. So what I can do here, I can say, let me say, 
I, I create this and I say, I don't know what author is going to be, but I, I assume that it could be of type U right here. But as you can see now below, it's, it's iBook is complaining, it's saying there is something missing. So what you do here, you just go here and then you say, well, author seems to be whatever you want, but you just have to type it before you have to give it here before you start. So what I'm going to say, it's going to be of type string. So me, I'm the consumer of this. I'm saying it, it is of type string. Okay, that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. We, we, we're over time, so I'm going to quickly wrap up and give you the repo so you can start the exercise at home. So what I'm showing you right here is uh, 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 what, 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 I'm, what I'm showing you right here is basically a way to say uh, that, that uh, you as the interface, the interface uh, author, you can give the flexibility to the other people to decide what they want to use as an extra type. That is going to be for next week. I'm done. I have a GitHub repo for you to play with, okay? Keep asking your question, because we're done for the TypeScript part, but I have a GitHub repo for you. So let me show you that GitHub repo. So um, here, Let me go. So I, I, I created a type store, a TypeScript store, right? So um, some uh, there, there is um, uh, how is what is name again? Todd Moto created a few years ago. He created um, like Redux by hand. So he, he, during his exercise, he created that by hand, and he was using TypeScript. So I took that repo, I removed all the TypeScript code, and I turned that back to JavaScript. So I'm giving you one week. One week, I'm going to share the repo with you, and, um, and I'm going to make sure that for a week, you can play with that repo, and next week, at the same time, at the same time next week, I'm going to do a live coding to fix that repo, to, to migrate it entirely. So we're going to play with typings and so many things, so you will be able to ask a lot of questions. So... Here's a GitHub repo. Uh, just take that here, GitHub. So I'm sharing a link with you right here on on the on YouTube, but that link will be added in the, as part of the thing. So what do you have inside that that link, that project? So that project has a set of things here. Right, so you see, there is a. Um, uh, uh, so so if you if you go here, uh, you go like okay, you have uh, the app TS, which is the starting point of the app. So there is a readme. I put a readme in the app. What the readme says, it says before starting, make sure to enable two options inside. Uh, 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 to, inside your GS config file. So you're going to have to turn the no implicit any to true, strict null to true, and actually I'm going to add that on the on here, and then you also need to add strict true here, okay? So that's that's three things. I'm going to make it, I make sure that you, you have those. Uh, add one more uh, uh, config okay and then git push origin step one okay just saying so um yeah it's uh, someone is asking uh wh where they could subscribe to the next session just subscribe on our youtube channel please subscribe on our youtube channel and then you will make you will receive the the update for the next session okay and don't forget to like the session. If you love it, please just share, uh, like it and give us some feedback. But I just share in the channel, I share the, the GitHub in the chat. So you can have it there. You can pick it up right there, okay? So now uh, I just want to finish quickly with uh, the code here. So it's all start in the app. And if you, if you start the app, it is very simple. It, it just goes and 
it's gonna run in the uh let me let me check oh yeah it's right here so it's running right here it's running here so you have uh learn typings okay you add and you can delete stuff uh learn uh, uh javascript as well because that's important right so this is not uh this is not uh, the most important thing. The app is running. It's written entirely in JavaScript. It's running. But if you follow the three step that I shown you right there, you should be able to transform this project entirely in TypeScript. And next Thursday at 12 p.m., I'm going to do that live here on YouTube with you with you all. So what you're going to do with that repo, you go ahead and and turn this entire project into TypeScript. So who's in for the challenge? I want to see people typing, I'm in. I want you to type on the chat that you're in for the challenge. And I'm gonna see you next week with that, that coding challenge, okay? You got it? We have it? What, what are the questions? I'm gonna get the question now. So uh, let, let's 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 take the question quickly. So um, some people. Okay. We have I had a few questions. Where are they? Um, yeah, let's let it come. I'm just going to get, so I was using Wallaby. That's good. Uh, oh, what, what, uh, where is, so uh, someone ask. Okay. I'm just reading, I'm just reading your question uh, uh, live. Um, Okay. Okay, so what do we have? I'm just reading your question. Oh yeah, E here, it's an event, I, I got it. So when you type it, uh, Shoni ask, I wrote some code here change is an event so you can type it there is a change and there is actually an event per uh per different there is a type for different event in in the dom right because yeah it's it's basically a dom related thing by the way it's it's in in that exercise that i'm sharing with you in that exercise here uh you get you get um the um you, you're gonna be playing with a lot of event, right? So you're gonna have to learn how to to do so, to, to deal with. So if you have questions, please. Um, yeah, yeah, the uh, o o overloading, overloading things, yeah. So let me, uh, let me, so yeah, Kurt is asking um, how you do overloading uh, in, uh, like an overload method in TypeScript, so. Uh, the way you actually do it, I'm gonna I'm gonna write that here, okay? So, um, so I, I'm just I'm just quickly so I like to say, okay. Uh, thanks, David. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm quickly answering the question uh, by, by Kurt, right? So for example, uh, if you can still see my screen here, I will go here and then say, uh, okay, let me, take, let me take another repo. Yeah, this one is probably better. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, we have another, we have a few repos, so I'm gonna take one that is completely neutral. Okay, so here, if I have a class employee, Okay, so I'm, I'm answering Kurt question, right? So if, if you say that uh, 
you're gonna have uh, three three different uh, method, right? So uh, I can say get. I, I'm going to create a function, for example, get employee. So that's a method, as you can expect. It an employee can have an ID, and then you say uh, the, the ID is a number. So what does that return? You can guess. It returns an employee, right? So that's what it does. Right? That that basically it, right? But I can actually type just this and say uh, this this thing here is a function that is uh, that's a function that does the job for me, right? So now I can say. I also have another function that is get employee, but that function there takes an email. So you're saying I want to take, I want uh, to take some uh, an employee by email, right? Same thing. It is exactly the same thing. But now I have a function. I can write a function get employee, and then what I do with that function, I say that function can take uh, a set of. Um, uh, parameters. So I can say, for example, um, um, op option op, op one, for example, and I, I'm going to say this could be, so this is a number, so that is going to match the, uh, the, the thing uh, up there. And then I'm going to have, um, okay, let me, let me think for a second, because the thing is like, you just need to declare them like this. Okay, and then the way you write them, you make sure that you're gonna match all these things right below. Okay, so it's not uh, uh, it's not really the the same idea of overloading that you have in in the in in a normal programming language like Java and stuff like that. But you still get the idea. Let me let me let me just there is a good example here that I can just copy. Uh, here for you so and then I can explain that quickly live here and then make make sure that you understand what I'm trying to say so um, so what you get here indeed you get the fact that there is three one with the ID one with the email and then one with the email and for example the name but the three functions they return exactly the same thing they return an employee so now you have a function get employees that can take a few parameters. So you say uh, this one can take a string and number, right? So what does that mean? It means it means this these two are matched, and then the third one can take a name here. So um, if I if now in my thing here I can write all the logic that helps me to retrieve an employee based on what you're asking, right? So what what I'm doing here I can say. Uh, this thing could be an ID or an email. So if I remove that part, I can now say, for example, I don't need that overload anymore. I don't need that overload at all, right? So I can remove, I can remove that 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 entire logic uh, here. Okay, I can remove that. So my. Uh, the, the, I have one function that handles two things at the same time. That's the main idea there. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Nicolas. That's exactly the, the, the what I was going there. Just wanted to make sure that uh, I don't take too much time. But that's exactly what I was going with it. Indeed, very good. Right, uh, 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 Kurt? Questions? Still, is it good for you? Yeah, let's let's the question coming. Any uh, more questions? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Yuri. Okay, uh, that was great. Uh, thank you, people. And uh, you have the GitHub repo. You have everything for next week. So what we're going to do next week? We just go over that repo and. Uh, we're gonna make sure that everything there is is fixed properly and 
and then we we're gonna move on to the the the, the next the next set of, uh, of of TypeScripting. We're gonna be talking about TypeScript in a React project, in the Vue project. Angular used that already, so those things are there already. So there is no. Um, uh, yeah, I'm gonna show more advanced stuff obviously as we go, but uh, during the coming weeks we're gonna have a lot of TypeScript stuff. Uh, yes, okay. So sign up, YouTube. We're we're there. You can go on akitis.io. You're gonna find tons of stuff, and and um, for those who are not familiar with packages we provide the same content online. We provide those training online as well. So. If you, if you feel like you want to spend two days with us learning Angular, React, or Vue, just go on community.hackages uh, and, and then subscribe to a training there. And we're going to do exactly this. But with the, with the simple difference is you will be also able to, to interact with me, ask a question, and then be able to build a, a, a knowledge of, about whatever you want. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, people. Bye-bye.